I go, and then okay. you go, and then okay. I go. Uh, top left-hand corner, the Who against the Union Jack. Middle picture of Joan Armour trading in black and white. Bottom left, got a lover, Dusty Springfield. Bottom right, a beautiful, pensive portrait of Ian Curtis from Joy Division. For lots of people, me as well, the whole idea of a portrait really begins in the privacy of a teenage bedroom, with those posters of pop stars and rock bands shifting with changing tastes over the years. I do cringe a bit at some of my choices, but always a celebration of those intense passions. And that's very much the vibe of the new British rock and pop ball at the National Portrait Gallery. A mixture of studio portraits, album covers and performers caught behind the scenes. Helping me identify some of them, not really very hard, was the 22-year-old singer-songwriter Arlo Parks, whose debut album, Collapsed in Sunbeams, won the Mercury Prize. She was also Best New Artist at the Brits and her new album is My Soft Machine. And what she sees in a portrait is never just a name. Yeah, so we've got on the top far right, we've got a beautiful picture of Kate Bush. I feel like there's a real softness to her pose there. The fact that she's kind of clutching her heart. Her music has been pretty life-changing for me. So I love the fact that she's up there looking so resplendent and sensitive. Ola Fox, thank you so much for coming to share your close encounter with a figure in the National Portrait Gallery. And it's a, a picture that is on this wall, the pop and rock wall, just over here. Tell us who you've chosen and why. I picked Polly Styrene, the singer from the band X-Ray Specs, and she also has her own solo project. I love here how kind of casual and smiling she is. I feel like there's something about the music that she makes that does have that sensitivity, especially on her solo project. She made this one in 1980 called Translucence that was quite different to the music that she made with X-Ray Specs that had this more kind of punk nature um, and her voice was quite like strident and abrasive. And then she made this really soft, sensitive record. So I think I like the contrast that she represented, especially being you know, half Somalian and being a woman in that punk scene and kind of having braces and not kind of looking like the traditional kind of punk persona. And that's something that always inspired me as a kid. I feel like seeing someone who was a woman and was half black kind of creating music that was outside of the mold. And I feel like that's something that I try and do. And this photograph, this black and white photograph is very much from her punk years. And it kind of explains the joke behind her name, yeah. Polly Styrene, because <laughs> there's a big advertisement, isn't there? Where did I put the polyfiller? The polyfiller, yeah, exactly. I love that, and I love even the poster behind her, just like that little, the little light bulb, and the fact, the little smile on her face as well. I feel like she brought this kind of cheekiness to to the punk scene. There is this kind of wit, even like there's a song called Warrior in Woolworths, which is just like absolutely. And I think yes, the the sense of humour, the cheekiness, her name, Polly Styrene. X-ray specs, the band's name. I mean, that's from ads in the back of yeah, comics. So the you yellow, used to pretend yeah. you could see through people's clothes. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, no, I, I, she's been honestly such an inspiration to me. And I think one of the biggest songs as well that I loved was this song called Identity, where she just like, at the beginning, just screams like, identity. And a lot of it is like, do you see yourself in magazines and maybe being the person that you wish you'd seen when you were a kid? and kind of being your own sense of representation for like younger generations. I'm so pleased that you picked her because I saw her back in the 1970s. Oh, I really? went on a march, it was Rock Against Racism and it was to see a lot of people, including The Clash, were headlining. Mm. And she was there in Victoria Park. Oh, wow. Screaming out, yeah. oh, bondage up yours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just, just, her energy was yeah. incredible. Oh, it is so incredible. And I feel like you can, you can feel that from the records. You can feel how much kind of power she put into her music, but also how like idiosyncratic she was like in that scene and obviously inspired by the Sex Pistols, but like very much herself. 